Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What You Say Anime. I am your host, Peter. On today's episode, we will be reviewing the winter 2024 season and giving our thoughts and ratings on a handful of shows. Obviously, there will be spoilers, so if you want to jump around, there will be timestamps located in the description below. Join me today, I have my lovely first mate, Miles, and seasonal review partner, Cosette. Before we jump into the first show, I want to get you guys' overall thoughts on the season that was. Yeah, uh, I had a great time with the season. I thought it was fun. Um, I don't remember exactly what our attitude about the shows premiering this were when we did our preview, Pete. Uh, but I think that it definitely met my expectations for most of the shows. I don't think there was anything that premiered this season that was like an amazing standout for me. But we also, you know, saw the finale of Friar and, and Apothecary Diaries, and you know, those obviously are massive standout so i think overall we have a bunch of amazing shows ending this season how about you cause that yeah for me i think i was really spoiled this season because four manga that i read got adapted three of the four was adapted perfectly one we'll talk about later yes, we will. Um, but i thought it was an incredible season i did drop more than usual this season but i think it's because i gave a lot more shows a chance um, but overall, I really like this season. Yeah, I, I think I would agree, especially with two juggernauts. I think ending at the exact same time was kind of like the, the icing on the cake, the the finale of the, all the fireworks going off at once. And I think that really was a great way to end this season, because I think. Overall, for like the new properties that were airing were like, I would say, OK to solid. Nothing like Miles said really stood out to me, but the two juggernauts wrapping up, I do think was just a great way to end a season. And we're going to be talking about one of those right away. You think after six months, miles would know how to say free run. He still doesn't. We're going to be talking about free run, a show that I think when I initially started off, uh, since I think we're all manga readers too, I said that this was going to be anime of the year quality. And it was, and I do want to reverberate some points. that like a lot of people make with like how well this show does like the passage of time. But the one thing that really stood out to me with free run more than any other show was just how easy the show was to consume where we had so many episodes where I felt like I watched it for seven minutes, eight minutes, and it was over in a blink of an eye. And I think to me, that's one of like the standout points of the show where you can handle so many different topics from simple slice of life adventuring to high resolution combat, gripping story and music and background art and everything that goes along with free run i think was just like unmatched it's been a long time since i've seen what i consider a generational anime this to me stood out in so many elements where it's really hard to nitpick i do think the flavor of the month right now is being really cool and calling free run overrated and then giving zero examples of why you think free run is overrated and i hear those people out there and I don't like you, but <laughs> um, I just, it, it's a series that I absolutely fell in love with. It's, it was a manga that gripped me. And when I saw that it was going to get adapted, I knew it was going to be something special. And I didn't think it was going to be this special. Everything about what Madhouse did was on another level. I, it's hard to say if like, this is Madhouse's like magnum opus because they are such a high quality studio with so many huge titles. I mean, they have, in the top 10 of say Mal, they have two titles in the top 10, I believe this and Hunter Hunter. So like they, they, they just produce like insane quality th content. And then they get something of this level. It's like, wow, they really like one upped something absolutely amazing. Whether it's the first season of one punch man or uh Hunter Hunter. Um, they also did like, you know, like death parade and some other stuff like that. Where in the past where like they make really high quality content and it's just, on another level um i'm gonna keep ranting but i'll pass it over to miles your initial thoughts and like what you thought of free run as as a whole yeah uh, fr fr uh, free run there was amazing i can't pronounce anything right you ever heard me say naruto like oh my god naruto uh you know it was everything that i hoped for when we talked about it you know we're both giant fans of the manga and we wanted it to be adapted well and it it was um this is it's been good for me. I have a lot of friends who are just very casually into anime, so it's like a slam dunk recommendation for them. And they'll be like, oh, wow, do you know anything else like it? And I have to be like, no, nah, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I think that like, I mean, I understand where the 
overrated stuff would come from. Not that I think it's like overrated or anything, but it, it's sort of smashing all the records and stuff. And anytime something that, you know, does that, you're going to have some pushback. Cause like, even if you think it's an eight out of 10, you're far below where the general consensus I, is. I just want to right? address so this I, real quick. It's the people that are like, oh, this stuff is so overrated. And then they like won't say why it is or give examples. Okay. Like people are like, yeah. the animation's mid. It's like, have you been watching this show? Like the dance scene itself yeah. blows 99% of the anime out of the water. It's just like, you're on crack. Yeah, it ha- I mean, every everything about it is just super good. The voice acting has been great. The animation is wonderful. The score is wonderful. Um, it gets the mood. Like, it does such a good job of conveying mood. And it's such a unique mood, I think, for the genre that it's in. You don't get the sort of melancholic feel from a lot of adventure anime, I feel like. And that is a refreshing uh, sort of take. The pacing in which it goes is a little bit more relaxed than we normally see which is is good. So it's, it's just a breath of fresh air for adaptations that I've I've seen before. Um, so, you know, it's good. I, you know, is it going to be my anime of the year? No, because there's another show ending this season that uh, I like a little bit more, but uh, it's very good. And I, and I loved it. Because that what, what are our thoughts here on Fryron? I have no notes. It was just so fantastic. And I think I tried to go in with no expectations, but Madhouse just like knocked it out of the park. Um, the animation was beautiful. The music by Evan Call was just unreal. I think it was probably my best favorite OST for this season. I really love the fact that the pacing was good, but also like the arcs weren't too long. Like the exam arc was like a couple episodes, I think, but I, I really enjoyed it. The voice acting was incredible. And I think what's, what was perfect about it is that Madhouse really enhanced the re- the source material. Like it was a one-to-one adaptation, but they really added more to the battle scenes. And I thought that was so beautiful. I cheered up a lot. It's not because Fryer's. I mean, it is sad, but I cheered up because it was such a perfect adaptation. I got a little bit emotional about it because of how beautiful Madhouse made it. So that's my general thoughts. Right on. Yeah. You know, this spanned over six months. So sometimes it's hard to recall specific instances. So there, I saw something online today about like what your favorite episode was because there were so many key moments, whether it was episode nine of like the Fern and Stark versus Lena and Luger fight to something like episode 26, where we had the Free Rin and Fern versus the Free Rin clone. Episode 28 uh, of the last episode, just the whole conclusion of the mage arc was, I thought, really well done too. So, did you have a maybe like, maybe not like a specific episode if you don't have one in mind, but like a moment that like really stood out to you that like made Free Rin what it was? Yeah. It, so, goodness, it's so, it's so tough to think for me what moment it fits the most that like makes it what it is because i think it's a constant for me the most important thing about F- free Ren is the tone and like the constant sort of hopeful yet melancholic uh, looking forward yet retrospective it just it sort of juggles those things a lot what makes me happy is all i guess the fl- i'm going to say the flashbacks with himmel and how she looks back at those and how the music changes and all of that is, is something that really stood out to me that I thought was done very well. You know, Himmel's a very interesting character because he's uh, dead, like really fucking dead. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he's like super dead, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, like he's been dead. Like every like again, in the beginning of every episode, it lets us know exactly how long he has been dead for. And it gets longer every time. But we still learn how he is affecting everything. And I think that is great. And you can see the contrast with Free Rin and other elves that we see in her connection to humanity because of the journey she went on with Himmel. And I just like seeing that progress throughout all of it. And that was done the way that I sort of always imagined it. Um, for me, I think the one episode I'll point out is the Stark introduction. I think that was the episode where he was fighting the dragon, where people were like, oh, this is what Freerun is. And I think that's the episode that people saw clips of the fight and they're like, oh, I should check out this anime. So I think that was the episode that I saw more people um, start watching Freerun. And I think that one stands out to me. I mean, there's so many battle scenes and there's so many perfect scenes. I think that episode really like told people, this is what we're doing and this is what Freerun is. 
I have a few that stick out to me in the earlier episode. The, the Zoltrak episode to me was like, kind of like a, Oh shit. Like that was the first time where I said like, Oh my God, like out loud, like this is insane. I thought that like the element of magic evolving, I feel like isn't really seen in fantasy all that well. Like it's always like, you know, the same ice lance spell is used throughout generation. This is a move where, it was essentially like the meta. It was the mage killing move 70 years ago. And now it's sort of just like a basic attack essentially for mages. And I thought like that was like a really interesting way to show evolution in magic that I really don't think is seen in fantasy all that often. Um, other ones that stood out to me were outside of the action scenes. I thought the dance uh, scene with Fern and Stark was just like next level shit. Like, that is that is flexing your animations outside of just action scenes. And Freeman itself did it the entire series. Even just like Stark putting on his jacket, Burn like addressing her like moving her dress so she can sit down. A lot of times in, in anime, what they'll do is they'll just like cut to their face while they sit down and they won't show that movement because it's you don't really need to. Like it's just somebody sitting down, but Freeman's like hold my beer, I'm going to flex on these kids real quick. And then they did. And we saw it the entire time. I think, Cosette, you mentioned it earlier. I think the OST just is a huge standout. Evan called it an amazing job. Episode one, I think it was one or two. I felt like I was watching Lord of the Rings again. Like, I felt like I was listening to, like, a full symphony of instruments being played during the Himmel funeral. And, like, also, like, the flashbacks of them coming into town as, like, heroes after they killed the Demon King was just, like, next level. and. There's just so many different moments that you can point out to them in this entire series and be like, yeah, that was like a, that was a pivotal point for me watching free run was scene X or scene Y. And I think there's so many of those scenes that show like the heart and the passion of free run that I think is just like next level stuff. Even like the one episode um, stuff that they did with like the old man episode and learning his backstory, them getting stuck in a blizzard and hanging out with the elf priest. Like some of that is just like really nice because they're on an adventure. Like your adventure takes years to get from point A to point B. And there's things in between that are mundane and boring and trivial and doing basic need stuff. And all of that is like encapsulated in this journey, this 10 year journey that they're like reliving through Freeran's past. It's, it's just a lot. I honestly could ramble about this show for like an hour because spoiler has been an hour. Oh my God. <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, I love this show. It made my, it's not my number three show of all time. Like I, everything about it from personal attachment to, I love stories about like the passages of time and how they perceive it being technical with the animation, the OST, the, the art, the backgrounds, the, the voice acting, uh, the character designs, all of this is just so well done. And I have the manga at a 10 and I think the anime just elevated a 10 out of 10 manga for me. And that's so hard to do. I don't know if that's ever been done for me where I have a manga that I think is just perfect and it's elevated and it was just everything I wanted. Do we have any final thoughts before we get into like our final ratings? Just really quick, Pete, if you want an anime, a fantasy anime that shows an evolution of magic I over generations. Don't even say it. Uh, what do you think I'm going to say? I don't know, but I'm scared because I do know <laughs> when it does go over multiple generations, it's getting a next season next. Season. My, my, my joke was just going to be full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It oh, was yeah. Very it's my number innocent. two anime of all time. Yes. <laughs> um, and Pete, yeah. if, you, if you like that concept uh after the episode and i don't want you to get scared but there are some book books i could tell you about that you might oh, enjoy the fuck? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> don't ever say the b word or i'll be a kid bro i'm sorry my apologies how dare you did you have any final thoughts though miles no nah, man you got it all right cool. how's that <laughs> I I can't wait till season two, but there I don't know if you saw the arguments online, but people think that the ending of the episode didn't actually announce season two, but it was more of an announcement to say, hey, the adventure continues on the manga. So oh. what, do you, what do you think? Was it actually a confirmation or that was that like, OK, go buy the manga? Um, that was well, a 
confirmation. I mean, yeah, if anybody I, knows I, anything about any form of business, this is getting more content, like a hundred million percent. <laughs> it's you know, how many shows get one season and an entire expo to themselves? Like I, you don't get entire yeah. expos to a specific show and you only get one season. By the way, I'm going to that expo. Uh can't wait. Um I would drop the score, unironically, just for that. That I mean, I'd like, be pissed, but I'd keep it at I, where it was. I, I'd give it a nine. I'd be like one point off for being a sociopath and putting <laughs> that at the end. I mean, <laughs> I'm still crossing my fingers that El Drado is a movie. I think the arc can be done in a season. I just think there's, I just think like a high budget quality movie could satisfy El Dorado in like two hours and get the full experience. And I'm really hoping, and you know, it's a movie that makes a ton of money. If it makes a ton of money, that means we get more content more than likely. So I'm just really banking on that, but we shall see. Getting into file ratings though, uh, it's a 10, obviously. Um, it's going to be my front runner for anime of the year. I'd be shocked if anything even comes close to it. Uh, it's my number three anime of all time. I love Free Run. I love everything that it does. I love everything that it stands for. I love the messaging, the theming, the characters, the music, the animation, the directing. Oh, it's so good. Everything about Free Run is incredible. I love even stuff like the fan art is going crazy right now. Like this is like such it re also reminds me of like Bochi the Rock. Where, like, it was such a huge phenomenon for, like, that, you know, it still is, but, like, so much fun fan art coming up. Shut the fuck up, Miles. Just, I saw your face. I saw your face. It's, it reminds me of just, like, everybody, like, universally, like, loving a property and just having a blast. You, you gave it an eight. You like Bochy the Rock. There. Confirm. It's canon now. Thank God. We've done it. I finally got there. Thank Yo, you. Trent, cut this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just one of those things where, like, everybody is coming together, and, like, this is why I love anime. Like, it's stuff like this show. It's a 10. Easy 10. Yeah, I mean, I, I gave it a 10. Oh. Oh. I, that's a 9. I'm seeing a 9 face. Who, me? No. Well, no, no way. Kozak gave it a 10. Oh, should I? I'm giving it a ten with a oh, star. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. giving it a star. So the star means that it's like my. Per I don't rank things like Pete. I just say it's my personal favorite. So it's a ten with a star. Um, it has a mix of like slice of life and fantasy, which is like my favorite things ever. So I, it's a ten and a star for me. Fantastic, three tens. And just for the audio listeners, that is just a whiny dog. Don't worry, Marnie is doing just fine. It's all good. Moving on to our next show, we have The Apothecary Diaries, Juggernaut 2 of the season. Wrapping up, I'll be the first to say that I wasn't as hyped as Miles and Cosette were in the beginning. However, to my, I think it's just really funny. Everything about like the second part, whether it's like the OP and the ED, I liked more than like the first one, but everybody else likes the first one more than the second one. I, yeah, I fell in love with Apothecaries towards like episode like nine. I really got invested in these characters. I really got invested in Mao Mao and Jinchi and a lot of the, like the other side cast, just the, whether it's like solving a mystery or doing something silly or getting backstory on Mao Mao. I fell in love with everything about the apothecary diaries. Also shout out. I listened to the entire OST today and that is just another amazing OST that we got back to back from free run with Evan call and then Kevin Pankin doing apothecary diaries, just like two juggernauts. I'm using Juggernaut a lot today, but I think that's like the, the correct verbiage for these types of shows because of what they like encapsulated and sort of brought to the community because coming off the backs of huge, I mean, this free run was a, well, actually this is a really dumb comparison now that I think about it, but you know, coming off the backs of last year with like Vinland Saga and Jujutsu Kaisen and a lot of these like action heavy oriented stories. Uh, I feel like Free Run and Apothecary really centered around the characters, the dialogue, sort of like what the inner workings of what they are presenting to us more than just awesome fights and beat em ups. And with Apothecary, we, we got a lot. And to encapsulate that all at the end with like Mao Mao and her dance, I thought was just like incredible. That was such an awesome scene. Um, I'm still shipping Jinchi, even though I know that's not supposed to be the part, but I really like sort of the. The, the it's like playful flirtiness but like at the same time like mama wants 
nothing to do with him. I really like that dynamic between the two. So huge fan of Apothecary Diaries. I'm going to pass it over to Miles and Kozat, who are bigger fans than I am, and get their thoughts on the series. Yeah, I think... Oh God, I just love Mau Mau so much. I mean, I love the whole series, but uh, genuinely, I don't know if I've ever seen like a character just propel something as strongly as like Mau Mau propels this because it's not something where it's like, oh, you know, the show sucks, but I do like this one character or something. It's like the show is amazing. And then also Mau Mau is so much more amazing. It's... <laughs> It's so perfect. She is just wonderful and like everything I would inspire to be is like a scientist. Um, I'm very jealous of her ability to just experiment on herself. That's generally frowned upon in like a modern setting. But it, the amount of joy that I had watching the show with all of Mao Mao's faces or interactions with Jinchi, the mysteries that they solved, like it just had so many aspects that I, I love to see in a show. You know, to avoid uh, doing what Pete did during Fryer and Cosette. Well, what are your what are your thoughts initially about this? Why did you love it so much? I'm going to pull a Pete right now and say I've got my manga. Nice, <laughs> right here. I will admit I've loved Apothecary Diaries for a few years. Um, I picked it as soon as I picked it up as soon as it got licensed in North America. Mamo means so much to me, and I will admit I was more excited about Apothecary Diaries than Fryer by like a little bit. That's fair. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, but Mau Mau represents my favorite type of female character who I call them goofy geniuses and Free Run falls in that category where they're geniuses, but they're also little nuts. And that's what I love about Mau Mau. She's got book smarts. She's definitely got street smarts. We've seen that a few times, but she's also a little crazy. But the one thing I love about her is that even though she has a facade of like not caring, she does have a big heart about like people at the palace and people around her. So that's what I love about her the most. I was hooked on the manga i was hooked on the anime i really wanted to have low expectations but as soon as the trailer went out i was like this is going to be the best thing ever next to free run so um <laughs> i just feel so lucky that like two of my favorite female characters are animated this season for like two cores like that's insane and i feel i'm very happy i'm in a i'm on cloud nine so yeah yeah one of the things that like really got me into like liking it more from the uh, compared from the first half to the second half was sort of I, I thought it took a minute for them to really establish like the cast for me so like really have like a set core of like what I'm going to expect from the interactions between these people and then once that was set that's what made the story for me like I felt like Jinchi was still figuring out Mao 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 was kind of like the wild card and playing into like all these different people's relationships whether it was um I'm going to slaughter her name Gyo Q, the the noble consort who had like the kid that we saw okay. um like once she once i felt like they had like a solid relationship with like her and mao mao like that's when i fell in love with this story and then you know olm i gotta give props for props as dude they, they're a fantastic studio great animations really funny also just like little like the chibi moments whether it's her turning into like a cat or them her like being thrown out of a room and she bounces sort of like a beach ball like stuff like that like really adds to a story that has really fun elements but at the same time can be like really serious so like dealing with like murders and suicide and plot where you know someone might get assassinated like when jinshi almost got like crushed to death like having those elements while having just really fun characters and really fun dialogue i think really goes a, a long way in this style of the show and it's confirmed for a second season that we're getting in 2025 so we're gonna get the mau mau sweep where she wins best girl three years in a row which is going to be nuts she's on some patrick mahomes stuff just throwing up the three peats so uh kansas city chiefs mau mau is going to be nuts um before we get into our final reigns uh miles and kozak did you have any final thoughts i wanted to to sort of piggyback on something because it said because there's a like a lot of the times in in anime, I have an issue with science-y characters, and I think it's because they always come off as so. I, I don't know what the word is. It's like their only personality part is that they they do science or something like, like Senku that. Senku or something. Like Senku, yeah. Like Senku 
Senku knows the science. He's the science guy, and that's how he solves everything. You know, but Mao Mao also has like amazing, you know, like social deduction skills. She's able to read people very well. And, you know, she loves science and she has fun with it. But there are also times where she like views it as a job. She isn't always obsessed with every single aspect of it, right. which I, I find to be like super, I guess, I, I don't know. It's like it, it feels accurate to me, right? Because there are things that I nerd out about and then there are things that I do for my job and then, you know, all of that. And I, that's what I just like loved so much about her was that she did this sort of like mad scientist trope but in a way that had her fleshed out it was just one aspect of her personality she wasn't she's a mad scientist she isn't only a mad scientist yep. and i thought that was great for me i i think they really enhance the source material but like i have only read the manga i know that there are there's also the light novel which goes more in depth on the story um, but for me, as a manga reader, I felt like they enhanced and they added more details to the story in general. So if anyone is planning on reading the manga, you'll see some differences. I think the first one I remember is episode three, when the concubine got to leave the palace. Like, that last end scene was not in the manga, and I absolutely cried. I was so happy. Um, but I just love the extra details they added. Um, I do. It actually convinced me to probably pick up the light novel, even though I don't read light novels. Um, it really did convince me to pick it up and read it because I want to know more. Spotify so, Premium has it, I believe, if you are so inclined. Oh, like the audio okay. book? Yeah. Right. Sweet. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is that, like, obviously, like, the OST was absolutely perfect, but the insert songs, I didn't expect, like, as many insert songs as there were. And they were all so perfect. And I think the last one, like that was the scene I was waiting to get animated was Mau Mau dancing on the roof. And then they added that song and I like, I wept. I wept. I was so happy as a manga reader just to see that animated. I just, I was just so happy about it. So, yeah. Yeah, this, this show almost yeah. made me cry a few times, which is tough for me since I generally don't. <laughs> like the lock, lock and flashback, mm. uh, like... And everything, and then like him just like running once he's put it together and stuff made me, because I I don't know I wasn't expecting that I totally thought this guy in per, like intentionally maimed Mao Mao's mom and like raped her or whatever, yeah. and you learn that just that isn't the case. And I I don't know if I've been hit by like a plot twist like that in anime in like a minute. It's been a while for me, so. <laughs> Uh, I like I really loved that. I thought the characterization was was really good. And then I don't know, it's just so so many great scenes. I love it. I, I think the lock in that episode was my favorite episode. That and the when Jinchi carries Mao Mao out. Oh, God, like, that's th so good those too. two really stick out to me. But that lock in was just like, you know, did he fumble the bag like at like the highest level? Absolutely. Like he, he fucked everything up. But like sort of like at the end where like it doesn't matter i'll pay anything like i i don't care like that that sentiment was just really well done i gotta give props for props too uh let's get to our final ratings i think this is a show with the second season i can see me bumping it up to a 10 this reminds me this one sound crazy this reminds me of link click where i want to see the whole thing before i give it a 10 essentially and apothecary okay because like i started out and like this was like an eight for me and as i got into more episodes i ended up giving it a nine and i can see me as i'm flowing through my process moving my way up because every episode got better and every episode i felt more connected to the characters i just want more and i'm getting that so as of right now i'm gonna give it a nine it did enter my top 100 so like it is like a very good and high nine for me and I'm really looking forward to seeing season two uh, next year. Yeah, I so I gave this a 10. This is like a very, very easy 10 for me. Um, this is my front runner for anime of the year currently. Mau Mau would solo Fryren in a fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, <so>. I lose. <laughs> um, you know, but I, I'm excited for more. Uh, like, I suspect it'll get better which maybe means I should reevaluate how my scale works, but I don't know. There's like super tens or tens with a star next to them. Right. So, super um, you know, 
that's 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 my thought there. I'm just so excited to see more. Um, I have the physicals of the light novel coming soon, which I'm excited about. But I guess it took them a while to realize that people want to read that. So it's not it's like in May or sometime that's coming in. So I'll have to wait. Um, good segue, because I'm also giving this a 10. <laughs> I I love it. I loved it since episode one. I, no, no. I'm i very biased because I love Mau Mau. I love the manga. I loved everything about it. The music, the animation, the people, the voice acting. I just, perfect. If I, maybe one day when I rank things like Pete, it'll probably be in my top five. But right now it's, it's up there. I was really bored during COVID. <laughs> Did I go through 700 anime and rank them? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's so many. I, I, that's why I do a top 50 and not a top. Which is one. probably to most people also probably crazy, but <laughs> yeah. All right. So two, two tens and a nine for Apothecary Diaries. Moving on to our next show, we have A Sign of Affection, one of the best romances I've seen in the last probably like five years. Yeah, Miles is Miles does not like a side of affection. So spoiler alert. I love everything about it. Uh time to bust out the old Pete. Here's my manga. I love a sign of affection. My so my look wasn't because of a sign of affection. It was because in in my memory, I so strongly remembered us talking about solo leveling next. And then I had to go back and look at the list. Oh, did I order. have the list wrong? No, you're completely correct. I'm oh, okay. off by like seven shows. Okay. <laughs> Fun fact, soul leveling and a sign of affection in the same universe. Just soul leveling, the gates only exist in Korea, so that's why they don't care. <laughs> we would all care so much, oh, by yeah, the we way. Would. It'd be if that started there. happening in Korea, it would be terrible. <laughs> yes. Okay, so back to a sign of affection. The, the, the tender love and care that this studio brought to accurately portraying deafness, I thought was... Oh my god, it was so good. The one scene that sticks out to me, and the one character that sticks out to me is she's only in like three scenes, and I think it's Madoka. Um, it's yeah. uh Yuki's like childhood friend who uh is introduced as somebody who is going deaf. And at this point in this in the story, she is deaf, but she wants to continue to keep talking. She doesn't want to lose that part of her and how they portray her you know, not understanding like volume control and sort of, to, I described it as like having a little bit of peanut butter in your mouth. I just thought like that attention to detail was so accurate and well done because I have people in my life that aren't like fully deaf, but have those issues. And I was just like, this is, this is perfect. I also found out like earlier before, or before we got this, that they were in pre-production with the show for a year and a half, getting the sign language correct and like hiring interpreters and making sure that what they are portraying on the screen is accurate, that they're not just going on to YouTube and seeing how to sign, you know, like when in the, like the OP, um, it's me does like, I think he says like he wants more and he does like the more, sign in the op and it's also addressed i think in episode two that's just like stuff like that is just so cool like i love when shows go the extra mile when they don't necessarily have to especially showing off like the it's me notebook is just awesome so outside of that the main couple yuki and it's me oh my god i love them i love yuki's sort of in a world of her own trying to broaden that and the goal of her wanting to something not just like with like a boyfriend, but like you, we see it with like her fascination of it's me and his backpacking. And like, I want to do that. Like I've been stuck in this shell my whole life. And now I have found somebody that can broaden my horizons. And like, I love that for her. Like that was like a huge emphasis. The last scene, I believe in episode 12 is her getting her passport, like stuff like that, showing her character getting out of this protective bubble that she's been so accustomed to because it's safe. And I'll bring up Oshi later, but like, I, I just loved how that was handled of showing somebody with a disability like this. Like you don't need to 
be protected. You can be a human. You can be a person. And I thought like showing Yuki off to the world like this was just handled really well. Um, I'm a, as you can tell, I love this. Miles, your thoughts on a side infection before I steal the show. My bad. Yeah, no worries. Um, it's your show, Pete. Uh, I, it's our show. Oh, thanks. Um, I really enjoyed Son of Infection. Um, I think that I had like a little bit of letdown on it just because I'd heard so much, you know, like this was like a quintessential sort of shoujo romance. And while while I enjoyed it, it didn't ever really like super resonate with me. There's a lot of great things that this this does. A lot of the the way that they do the animation during like different signing scenes between Oshi and Yuki, for example, are very, very great. And, you know, like the background sort of falls away and like the words from the signing appear on screen and like crumble into dust and everything. There's a lot of really good imagery uh, there and in other scenes as well. It just different times that we see the world from Yuki's perspective. And so they'll cut music and they'll cut sounds and everything out and you just sort of hear like a, maybe a slight static noise um you know because her hearing aids allow her to like know when sound is happening but that's about it she can barely even like point a direction to it you know so those were very well done uh, i thought it was fun to learn like a little bit of japanese sign language um i was doing it at like the gym whatever like i would watch it at the gym and they'd be like thanks i'd be like <laughs> while, while I'm on the treadmill, <laughs> it, it, it's like pretty, um, pretty like intuitive too with like the kanji. Like I was like, oh wow, like I might just sort of know more Japanese sign language because of how intuitive it is than like American sign language, you know. So I thought that was good. I thought the cast was all very good. Like everyone was like interesting. Like you know, we're like a hashtag fuck Oshi podcast, but Damn I think right. I think he's a he's a good character from the standpoint of being a character in a in a story, you know. Like what he represents is pretty clear, you know. So I I enjoyed that. I think they sort of sped run the end, which makes me think they we're did. not getting any more of this. Yeah. And that I, I'm not gonna lie, that did hurt my enjoyment a little bit because you have this build big build up with like Shin and Emma, for example, and then she's just like, I guess we should date now. <laughs> like it was just very weird. Like you had this big revelation, and there was like, and then she just showed up at the end. So like. You know, I guess I'm glad if we weren't going to get any more that they, you know what? No, I'll read a manga like just leave it open. You know, I don't think they necessarily needed to tie everything up, even if they weren't going to make any more because the story does exist somewhere. And it, for someone who's a more casual viewer, wrapping everything up might confuse them on that. I don't know. But, you know, um, I have some hater stuff, but we can talk about that in a sec, Pete. But I want well, I want to just make sure that everyone understands that I, I did really like the show. Uh, Cosette, you, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I am another manga reader and a manga fan. Um, so seeing this animated really made me really happy this season. I think the care, like like what Pete said about just the amount of detail they put into the sign language, but also the sound, like you said, uh, Miles, is just that you can hear it from Yuki's perspective, but you can hear it from like, it's me's perspective. I think there was so much detail that was put into this production. And I really like the emphasis on the hands because that was a big focus in the anime. Like you can see there was more detail in the hands. The hands look more enhanced. They looked also pink for some reason. Um, but I just really love the amount of care and detail they put into this. And as a shoujo romance fan, I, I do enjoy the fact that it wasn't a slow burn. It was like a write off, like a few episodes in, they're dating. There's no confusion. There's no miscommunication. Well, there is miscommunication, but it was just as a romance fan, it was nice to just see a couple, an adult couple actually get together and they, Yuki learns about romance and being in a relationship. And I thought that was so adorable. But yeah, that's all I can think of right now. You made a, a pink comment. The color palette that they used a lot of the times were like light blues, pinks. And then when it came to like eats me, I felt like a lot of times they use like light grays and stuff like that. And they use like really nice light colors throughout the series. And then you had, I, I don't know if they did this like on purpose, but Oh, she always wore like a dark green sweatshirt. And I thought like that stood out to me, even like uh Koya, the, the manager always wore like light colored outfits. Rin, I think matched like her personality. She uh, wore a lot of clothes that like, 
suited like I, I think a lot of times they like matched her hair color. But like I think they did like a really fun, interesting thing with like the color palettes throughout the entire series, and that was just kind of another like nod to I don't know if that was on purpose, but like I definitely saw that. And it definitely like resonated with me. Um but I do want to say like I I think the Oshi character is a point of conversation because we brought it up a lot in our Discord, but like throughout just other like interactions I've seen, like Oshi's character is supposed to be like he's supposed to be sort of like this jerk character who's keeping Yuki inside of her bubble because he views her as sort of like somebody who can't do things on her own like that is Oshi's character and I just thought how that was portrayed throughout the story was handled really well and I did like towards the end where we got like a glimpse of Oshi kind of coming and understanding sort of like you know maybe what I am doing is not necessarily right and maybe I should start thinking about like her more because I think a lot of times what he's doing is what he thinks is right and never what yuki wants and like i don't think at any point in the series he asks what does like what do you want and i I think that goes a long way i think it's like a good message to send to sort of like if you're viewing this and thinking oh she's not like this ableist douchebag kind of view kind of think about like what he's doing and the viewpoint that he's seeing it from and that he is an ableist douchebag that he's not respecting yuki and like kind of understand why so i i really like how that was portrayed in the miles you hate oshi too say something i I do i (laughs) i hate oshi i mean for the reasons that that you've listed right i mean like it's episode like two or something where someone wants to invite yuki to a party and he's like you can't do that because she's deaf and it's like i had a friend in college who was deaf like very very deaf and he went to parties. Yeah, I have, <laughs> I, I have a friend in a wheelchair in college, and if we went to parties, you know what we did? We carried him up the stairs. Like, yeah, like they're, they're humans. They can interact <laughs> with other humans. Like, they're not, they're not a dog on a leash. And I, uh, oh, hate ableist people. The oh, well, yeah, like that's the thing. Like, he just like, but he he also <laughs> the ableism comes from him wanting to feel special right because yes, he had the whole thing about like he viewed yuki as a way that he was special to someone with basically minimal effort right like i guess there was some effort into it he learned sign language but he did the i'm um, nice why aren't you dating me thing but he learned sign language I mean, he didn't even yeah he, but he didn't he did the exact opposite of that he learned sign language specifically to be mean to he, her if like, he, yeah it's like if he wanted to date you he all probably all he had to do was be nice he probably would have gotten a date yeah it legitimately probably would have worked right the i'm nice why won't you date me if i he probably could have done it you know but he was just upset that anyone else like inserted themselves into her life and like any capacity and you know he thought he was like privileged to that and he's a sack of shit so (laughs) you know that's that's what i got i mean i do i do like him from like a like a character aspect and i like empathize with him in the way that like i get it bro but like also you gotta like suck less you know so (laughs) um he's not irredeemable that's like the thing yeah he's not like i mean yeah he hasn't committed like a war crime thing right he's just that a douchebag um <laughs> true <laughs> that's uh, there's that so does that you got anything on oshi i mean you all you both said it he's a douchebag but i can think of it as because like romance is subjective everyone has a certain opinion with romance so i feel like the people like that like that like oshi are probably people that want a protective person in their life which most of us don't um so i can see why they might like him that way but one of my favorite scenes actually was just it's me just being like yo let's hang out let's have a drink like that was incredible and you rarely see that like with rivals i think in most like romance uh, manga anime so i thought that scene was just so funny rivals. <laughs> Rival, <laughs> yeah. it, Hard it, me is, a, is not afraid of Oshi. <laughs> This is um You have Riz God versus Cuck Lord. Like I think he's Yeah, good. yeah. I mean geez the we you know, and like I for for people who like Oshi, like I get it, right? I like I like him as a character too. Just, well, I mean even the people who person. like like him as like a romantic person uh, because he's like hot. 
I mean, yeah, like the thing, you know what I mean? Like if we've if we've seen my taste, right? Like Ugh. he's he's not evil enough because he hasn't committed a war crime. So yeah, like you make a good point. I know. Like <laughs> how much hotter would he be if he committed a war crime? Am I right? At least two um, points. There, there's something hot about broken people, and it's not because I'm broken and <laughs> see myself definitely not in them. At all. It's definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> right and it's definitely not like any way that i cope with trauma in my past or whatever it's that i'm objectively correct um, true so you know um to be a hater yeah. really quick this the romance between yuki and it's me like never really really grabbed me and i was thinking about why and we had a conversation about this uh, recently in the discord and i think i figured it out why and this is gonna sound insane it's me's too hot that's what it is that's why I don't think it because we were talking about like someone was like, is Kaguya even a romance? There are like three or four romantic parts in it or whatever. And then I was like, yeah, like, but that to me, that is like the correct number, right? Like you, because everything he does and says is absurd. It is just like, I'm just like taking notes. Everything he says is the hottest, most romantic thing in the entire world. And it's too much bro yeah. like it's like be normal for half a second you know what i mean like i don't know we've you know like it's, it's my wife is watching this with me and i'm not doing this to her but she leaves me for eats maybe, me maybe you should <laughs> every every sentence every every sentence in the show i mean it, it, like how many like whammy i'm so fucking hot moments does east and me have per episode like five anytime like, it's on screen yeah it's it's insane to, like to me that's like very i think it's just too much because it it stops feeling special to me when he does romantic things because of because of the frequency of it i guess like to me there's something to be said about you know people who are you know and he this is just because he's such a riz lord right like i mean he's not ever nervous there was no working up to this like he didn't accomplish anything he just very confidently was like want a date because i'm the hottest guy ever and she was like yeah for sure do because you're the hottest guy ever you know so I, I don't know it's just everything he does is so like um ren and guy that ren dates there's like awkwardness there but then it like works out so you like have a payoff where eats to me is just like all the serotonin there's no like build up to it um, and I think that might be my issue with it. Like, I don't mind it. Like, I don't think he's bad or anything, but I think I, I sort of need like a more on off sort of thing where I get like rewarded as opposed to just constantly being bombarded uh, with romance. I think it's just too much. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense because that was looking at me like I was absolutely insane during that. I think you just found <laughs> out how much like, like, I don't know <laughs> how much Riz you have, my man. Uh, it, uh, uh, enough is how much no, that's I had. true so, it, wor yeah. it worked out for you uh cosette is there such thing as someone who's too hot i mean i just think he just oozes confidence and confidence since his confidence is sexy he knew what he wanted he went for it he didn't like have give mixed signals he's like i know what i want i'm an adult i'm not gonna play games we're not gonna do a slow burn let's just do it and they did it and i yes it's me is very hot, but it's nice compared to some shoujo romances out there. So I just it was refreshing to me because it was nice to just see a man with confidence who said, I want this. Ask for consent, obviously, but yeah, yeah. it's me's yeah. hot point. Yeah. point. He, 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 uh, yeah, not denying that. Uh, he's too hot. In fact, uh, you know what? I think this isn't a <laughs> condemnation of me. It's a condemnation of my wife because I am not used to someone sweet talking me constantly 24 7 like eats me does to yuki that's what i think oh maybe i'm not getting enough <laughs> i think you should sweet talk your wife so far i okay I, I say very nice things to my wife kayla's lovely i will she is she, she's she a wonderful seems happy lady. so <laughs> the last time i interacted with her she seems very happy maybe a little tired as well but there's other reasons for that uh let's get to our final thoughts and ratings i uh, i love the sign of affection um, so much heart and care went into the story. I love the time that they put in to really showcase the hearing disability that it is. Um, I was, I am 
in the fan of I I think Itsumi could be hotter. Um and we do actually see that in the manga. It's uh, dangerous, dude. Um a <laughs> little bit of a manga spoiler is about Trickleson. He dyes his hair and ooh, ooh. Okay, his hair. Ooh Lord. Oh. Ooh Lord. oh my god. Dude, I thought you just hit me with Itsumi dies. No. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck happens? <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> Oh, she has a chance, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I love man. Like their date, I think it was in like episode eleven or twelve. Was just at the garden. Yes. Oh, that was so. Yeah. I love that. Uh, it was so nice to see like a side of Yuki. Like you know, like how happy she was to just be surrounded by flowers, and then like each of me coming to that realization is like, oh, like she loves this. Like oh, I have that in the back of my head now. Like for. You know, we can come back next spring or whatever, and we do the same thing again. And like, now I know that she likes these type of flowers. I thought that was like a really subtle way of like showcasing that to eat to me. I just really hated how it ended. I thought it was like really fast paced. The Emma and Shin stuff in the manga is like really well done. Like coming to terms of like, you know, the person that you've been in love with for like five, seven years or whatever. Like, it's never going to happen, and like. You're going to have to move on. And that is a huge thing in the manga and is just sort of completely skipped over at the end of the anime. And that was like, oh, so like it, it was pretty much like determined we're not getting a second season, even though if for some reason, by the grace of God, I think there is a really easy way to showcase that and sort of. I mean, there is stuff in the going reel forward. It back. Yeah, you could reel it back, I think, pretty easily in like flashbacks and stuff like that. And whatever and like showing the conversations that they had but this was lovely this is uh going to be like my front row for like romance of the year um i'm giving this a nine i i loved it yeah i really enjoyed the show uh i was upset when i saw the ending because like i definitely wanted more as you know the normal miles aspect of, like i like side couples more than main couples and essentially almost every romance ever i don't know what that says about me but it says something uh, write in the comments uh, what, you, what you think it says. <laughs> um, you know, but like other than that, I thought it was very good. You know, I never got like all super doki doki over it. There was nothing in it that like made me want to relive the love of my youth or anything. But I thought it was a good manga or not manga show. Um, and honestly, I might I might read some of the manga because it was I mean, the ending was just very like. I'm mad at it now. It worked, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah that's not right. I know that's not right. I'll show you and I'll, I'll read your source material. So, you know, I don't know. I give this an 8 out of 10 and it, it was very enjoyable. Um, For me, I gave it a 9, not a 10. Only because of the ending, I was really upset. I had to, like, go back into my manga because I was like, I don't remember any of this. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it was sped one, but... I think that it still was animated so beautifully and I do hope that maybe they can do a season two if possible. Um, I do want to shout out the throwback scene where they, when they were in high school, because that's not in the manga, um, unless it's in a future chapter that I just haven't read yet, but I just, that was not in the manga. And I just really love that story of the three of them back in the day. Um, but yeah, overall, I really loved it. I will watch it forever. <laughs> that throwback scene where Shin has the oh. biggest bag fumble of all time of all <laughs> time where he was like and i'll never love her <laughs> in fact i, I hate her <laughs> there's what well, i guess like i have a personal story there was there was a, a girl who i was friends with uh who was like really good friends with my then ex-girlfriend and i was like talking to her at some point and i was like Oh, like you're like my most platonic friend ever. Don't worry. And then we like hooked up like four hours later or something. Wow. So I, it, there was like some mood to that where I was like, oh, uh, yeah, you definitely say that kind of thing when you're like into someone. So like I got it, but like <laughs> it was quite the bag fumble by Shen. <laughs> it was. All right. So that's two nines and an eight for a sign of affection. Moving on to our next show. I think only me and Cosette watch this. Uh, the weakest tamer uh, began a journey to pick up trash. Um, as of recording, we are one episode away from finishing, but I think based off what we got in the last episode, it's, we can pretty much conclude that I have an idea of where this is ending uh, a show that I, I really enjoyed the beginning. 
of this uh sort of ivy's backstory of sort of being labeled as in a world full of magic sort of being like this you know i think she had magic but she's like a level zero or something like that and sort of being portrayed as what i assumed as like the salem witch trials as like a witch and like the entire town literally trying to kill her then she had to get out and escape and sort of that journey and then once it sort of got like established of like her journey i fell off a little bit as much as i love sora the entire op skill of him being able to detect if somebody is good or evil was just so it's just such a broken skill and then for a slime i guess in terms of like magic abilities that doesn't make sense to me so when i get into nitpicky stuff i just get a little lost but like the interactions especially at the end where they had like this whole scheme of like overthrowing the city but then like they knew that they were trying to overthrow the city so they're going to overthrow them before they overthrow the city i thought was just handled really well where like i even like fuck yeah with like the old dude started like punching people in the face i'm like this is great this is fantastic so uh it's a mixed bag for me because i do think that it ha- if we got like more content it could showcase more of what i was looking for in the story with like her adventure and sort of um the thing cuz like i don't think at any point she picks up trash so like i don't really understand the point of the title but like <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know anything about this show she and like <laughs> she picks up like some trash but like when going into this like i thought like she's going to be like the magic trash man or i guess yeah and she ends up just being like a common adventurer with like the most op slime and also like ta- i mean i get that she's a tamer but like also just taming like the s-class monster in the jungle as like her cat pet i was like I I I guess this is how it's how it's working now. So uh, I'm a little mixed bag with it, but I did. I would say I enjoyed the show. What are What are your thoughts, Cosette? I'm not gonna let Miles talk. It was a surprise hit because I think like I saw the trailer and I was like, this looks like Fluffy Paradise with the slime. So I was like, okay, I'm down for it. And I, the first episode was beautiful. Like I didn't expect mm-hmm. the animation to the level that it was. Um, but I really love Ivy as a character. And yes, I do. I do think the first half was probably the best part. Just like seeing her like be independent and try to live by herself. And then obviously get Sora. And then um, you didn't mention his other OP skill healing. Hello. Like, oh, yeah. Well, uh, like, like it makes sense in the story because like all Sora eats is healing potions. Yeah, but the fact yeah. that he can use healing magic, I think, makes sense. It's more of the telepathy of knowing who is good and evil based off of the vibe. I, I guess he's, his skills like vibe check, essentially, and just be like, yeah, this person's evil. And they're like, all right, cool. I guess they're evil. <laughs> but I just I really love Ivy as a character. I think it's a really good underdog story. Yep. It's probably there's a few underdog stories this season, but I think this one was one of the top ones. Um, I do think like the second half plays a part where like because Ivy was so independent and alone for so long and she mm-hmm. hid from people. So I think the whole purpose of the second half was to see her like open up to more people and accept more people into her bubble. Cause she didn't trust anybody because of the trauma that she went through, which was like one of the saddest episodes this season. I think I cried a million times watching that, but I just, I really enjoyed it. And I actually do want to read the manga cause I saw a future manga cover and there's a new character that might also look like a slime. Ooh. So I, I, I want to read it. So I'm, I will read it. Yeah, big fans of slime. Another like nitpicky thing when it comes to, like fantasy stuff is you said this, like the yeah. underdog story where like she's killing essentially rats for money <laughs> so she could eat. And like she's broke. And then she just gets like super rich really fast. Like she's like I forgot like what it was. She's like an accessory to like um finding Murder. like two no no, sorry. Like she <laughs> helps capture like two wanted people like she'd actually capture them she's just like helped provide information and it's essentially like oh you helped us catch two people here's like 40 grand it's just like she's nine <laughs> it's like okay she went from like being super broke to like insanely rich and i was just like you know and like 
sometimes I'm nitpicky when it comes to, like fantasy. When we talk about shows that we dropped, I'm gonna be super nitpicky on a show, especially when it deals with something that I really enjoy. So that's just one thing with like fantasy, where it's like you literally went from. I, I hate this compare this to free, but like they're broke, and so like how do they get money? They go to the sh- they like take jobs to clean up the shore, and they use their magic to like pick up broken boat pieces and stuff like that, and then they make enough money so they can just survive. And this is like, you know, she went from broke girl to girl boss in like a week. So, but like, oh man, there there was really good things about this that I liked. The, like the final group that she's with was like really fun. I like how they're like understanding and they each kind of like had their role. Oh my god, what's the guy that she like is in the restaurant with? Uh, once. Oh, the- what was it the redhead guy yeah like i liked his like role as sort of like the big brother it yeah. seemed like and then like the other like older cast was like really well so like at the end of it i i did cheer at like the final scene it's just like some of the stuff that i look for in fantasy i didn't get and also this is like technically no i guess it's reincarnation i don't know if it's technically an isekai but like sort of like the 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 bell ringing and having like a hint of what's going on because of the past memories was a little confusing because at some points she like n- understood it like completely. And there's some points she's like, Oh, what does that mean? It's like, it was just like so hit and miss with like the information that's provided to her from like her past life and how that mm-hmm. applied to the scenario. So I w- I like, I would recommend this show and I think it was fun. It's just, some of the things that I look for in fantasy miss the mark. Did you have any final thoughts? Not really. I think it's if you like fantasy, I think this is a good one. And even if it is reincarnation, there's it's very a small part of the show, mm-hmm. to be quite honest. Um, but I do really love the the underdog story. And I think with the redheaded, I, I feel bad. I don't know his, his name, but the redheaded character, I think he's a good big brother and a mentor. Because like in that last fight scene, he's like, I don't have much of a defense skill, but I can do this now because I trained myself. And I think that's a great learning point for Ivy because she just thinks that she has no skill. She can't develop it. But I think he will probably help her in the future to develop mm-hmm. something. So uh, I do. I think it's an inspirational story. Obviously, it's not the best thing. But I think with the animation and everything, it's really beautiful. And I recommend it if anyone likes fantasy. So his name is yeah. Rat Lore. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I would remember that. That is so. not the best. Name. Also, at, at the end, where like you know, it was like the the girl and her two brothers, and like they were a part of the conspiracy. And then, yeah. she, and then she's just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then she gets like no repercussions. It's like. Oh, well, now she's good, so it's fine. I hated that. It's like, she's been evil this whole time. Like, her brothers get their ass beat, but because now she wants to, like, not be evil, then it's cool. I'm nitpicking. Um, I'm going to give the show a 7. It was fun. I would recommend it if you're looking for, like, an underdog show with some fantasy elements. Um, Just when it comes to me, there's just some things I missed the mark. But, like, if it got a second season, I would 100% watch it. Um, I think I'm currently at a 7.5. Depending on what the finale episode looks like, it might be an 8, might stay as a 7.5. So right on. I'm between both. Right on. So 7, 7.5. Uh, moving on to our next show. Another fantasy show that had healing magic in it. This one would not be super long like we did with the last one. The wrong way to use healing magic. I just to say shout out to Rose. Love her as a character. Uh, her backstory was like really well done. I like that word like you sort of see why she's so tough on the characters. The The whole isekai part of this is like, whatever, like, they're just walking home from school and now they're now they're the heroes of this world. It's, it's whatever. But like, what the show lacks in like, story and plot, I think it does a really good job of just having like a really fun cast. Really fun interactions with each other. The dialogue um, with like the senpai and the main dude, uh, Usato, I thought like a really well done. The little romantic subplot between Kazuki and the princess, I thought was really fun. Also, no, there's one episode before this is, while this is airing, so we have to finish it off. But like, I I didn't really like the Dark Knight stuff towards the end. I get where they're going, but. I thought like as like a final, it seemed like it was sort of a final boss. I didn't really enjoy how she went from being like evil to now essentially on the same team as the healing crew. Uh, but 
just a show that looks on paper looks really, really bad ended up being pretty fun and enjoyable. What were your thoughts on uh, the wrong way to use healing magic? <laughs> Rose is the reason why I watched it because I saw a clip of her on Twitter and I was like, I'm watching this like badass female character. I signed me up. I was already all over for her. What I liked about this story was that, yes, he's becoming a healer, but he's also like a healer hybrid where he's also like a warrior. And I found that aspect of the show really cool. Um, I thought the story was fine. I think like at the tail end, yeah, I just don't know where it was going with the demons. And like, I just don't know where it's going. If there is a season two, I probably will still watch. Um, But I think it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. You know, yeah. You know what's crazy? I, I looked to see like how popular this series was in Japan. It almost has four million copies sold. This show is this property is very popular in Japan. I'm like, what? Like, I think there's a good chance we get a second season. I'll be intrigued to see it was it on like Saturday, I think this airs that if it if it's confirmed. But uh just so we can move on, I'm gonna give this a seven. If you're looking for like fun isekai stuff, I think this is a good fun isekai. It's not nothing groundbreaking, but I also don't think it does anything like bad. Um, so I had a really good time. And Rose, Rose is just such a great character, big fan. Um, yeah, I'm stick. I'm sticking with a seven, even though there's still one episode left. I just, I think it's fine. It's, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's a seven. Yeah, yeah. I can't really see it going either way after the last episode, though. So. Also giving it a seven. Moving on to our next show, what somebody has called the best romance anime in the last 10 years. Uh, the Dangers in My Heart second season. Also note, there's one more episode left. I have a very good idea of what's going to happen based off of the preview art where I think, I think Kotaro finally, or Kotaro, whatever his name is, I think he finally confesses. So we shall see if that happens. I gave the first season a seven. I didn't really get the hype. I thought it was like really fun and cute. The second season I think is better than the first season. The I'm a huge fan of like the, the new additional cast that they added um, mm-hmm. with the girl who wears the face mask and wants to get everybody dating using flash mobs. I thought that was like really cute. And then sort of the, the it is kind of cliche where like the girl who doesn't know what love is and, kind of wants to understand what it is and Yamada's like, ooh, I'll show you because that's like her character is I like that a lot. Sh- like showcasing I-, I like how the show the show showcases like parents. Um yeah. both uh Yamada's and Ichikawa's families. I I'd like that uh interme like mingling of those two and sort of Yamada's dad being like this culinary bodybuilder probably otaku like I get the appeal and then like when he did the slick back his hair and then the girl's like uh, oh my god it was probably the best scene of the whole season where she's like looking at him and like doesn't see an ounce of appeal to him and then he immediately pushes back his hair and she's like oh I get it now like <laughs> ah that's why ah okay um but really cute really fun second season so far what are your thoughts so far on it that it's so cute. I mean, there's one thing that I that's keeping me from rating it any higher, but with Yamada, I love her. She's a great character. She's so charismatic. Um, she's so bubbly, and she wants to like, improve her career. But the one thing that like makes me not give it a perfect 10 is a lot of the scenes with Yamada, unfortunately, are very suggestive. Um, just like recently, the ab rolling scene, uh, yeah. when, she was, when she was brushing her teeth and like... I, so that's like probably the one thing that like keeps me from giving it a perfect 10. But still, like I loved the season seeing their chemistry and seeing their like friendship relationship grow. Um, I think like the first season was about Kyo just like coming to terms with the fact that he likes her. And now the second season is like, okay, now I actually am telling people. I'm I'm telling my friends. I my told she he told her his her her dad. Yep. Um, so I think that that's really cute. And that's what I loved about the second season. And then side note about Yamada's dad. I just had this like fantasy that he's actually loving Yamada's like loving Yamada Yamada mm-hmm. grown. Up. He's also uh, like an Ataka. That long hair. And I was like, is that Yamada? You'd have to gain about 150 pounds. <laughs> Time comes for us all. No, well, hey, he's, sure. got, he's still young. But yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. Besides the suggestive scenes, I think, like, the whole, like, high school romance and, like, learning how to 
confess the person you like is very relatable and, and very cute. I think they're in middle school. <laughs> that, feel, that feels worse with the Yamada scenes right now. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Yamada's 14. I think they're like <laughs> second or third years in middle school, if I'm not okay. mistaken. Yeah. See, that, that's the thing. It's like, I don't want to knock points off it, but like when I look for romance, when you're in middle school, I like the silliness that's something like Teasing Master Takagi-san, where like, it's a lot, it's way more lighthearted. Even though the show is really lighthearted, it's more of just like suggested silly uh, flirtiness, but like never really committing because dating in like sixth grade is pointless. <laughs> this is... I, really good it's really fun um yamada is great but it's just not what i look for in romance when it comes to it like i, w- I don't think i would ever like if i was like browsing barnes and noble and i had the choice between like a bunch of different romances and i just look at the cover if i saw that the characters looked like they were in you know elementary school or middle school or maybe like really young looking high schools i don't think i would pick it up and that's sort of where i lose my points just because when I see something like a sign of affection, that is me. That is what I am looking for in my romance. When it comes to dangers in my heart, it's just not ty- the type of tone and the type of vibe that I'm looking for. And like you said, you know, we get that Yamada is a model and, you know, she's beautiful and she does poses and stuff. It's like, we get that. And, but it's like, I, I don't know, like the Aberlay scene where like somebody brushes her boob and she's like, which one of you was it? Was it the dog or was it Ichikawa? It's just like, I'm better off if that scene just doesn't happen. Like it's not, I, I think that scene can be fun without being how they laid it out. And that's where it loses me a little, but I, I would definitely recommend the dangers in my heart for like romance people just because it's so much fun. The cast is great, and yeah, it, it's just it's just really good. And Yamada's, you know, Yamada, she's incredible. Do you have any final thoughts before we get to our rating? You just said it perfectly. Yamada's Yamada. She's the reason that I started the show, watched the show, and continued it because I really didn't care about Kyo that much. But now I actually do have a bit of heart for him, so I think it, it's cute. It's fine. Besides, like, it could be better without the suggestive scenes, but. I still enjoyed it. So in my head, I kind of just like erase it in my For head. Sure. So, but yeah, it's fine. I, I still really enjoyed it. I had a really good time. Besides like the high dive issues that Pete and I were the only oh, ones. God. That- <laughs> but other than that, I think it was, it was still like a really fun experience. So yeah. Yep. I'm giving it an eight. I think it's one point better than the first season. Uh, I think that there is a good chance that this gets a third season as well. I, I think it sells really well. It's really popular. And I believe that there is content for more. So, yeah, I'm going to give this a, it's a solid eight. Mm-hmm. I'm between an eight and 8.5. I have a feeling I know what happens in the last episode, so I might bump into an 8.5. So I'm in between. All right. Uh, that wraps up this. Before we get to our last part, we're going to go to shows that only like we watched and shows that we dropped um, before we get to our last show of the night. Cosette, do you want to start it off? Side note, are we talking about solo leveling? That's just kidding after this or nope. Is it? Okay. nope it is definitely soul leveling okay cool. um i i will thank you for doing that i will that's fine trent edit this out wait solo leveling was next yeah that's but i was like maybe i saw the note uh, i was i was looking at the list pete sent me in just pete and i's dms and not yeah. the the three one that's my so, bad. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i for some reason i yeah soul leveling is definitely after apothecary diaries okay trent yeah. keep this in that's <laughs> yeah i definitely <laughs> fucked that up i it's it's okay so how i have it is i have it uh tabs for each show on my mal and yeah. I just never pulled up the solo leveling tab. So that's oh, my okay. I, that was my next tab after the side of affection yeah, or whatever. You know what, Trent, or you, Trent, leave this in. I think this would be funny. <laughs> Let's talk about solo leveling because I fucked up. <laughs> um, <laughs> me and Miles talked about this earlier in like our mid-season review where like solo leveling doesn't hide what it's trying to do. And that's what I appreciate the most about it. It's about a dude getting really strong, really fast. And with that comes cool stuff in this case it's getting a bunch of money and trying to monopolize the portals 
And I respect that. I respect the capitalism that is Jin Wu Sung. Um, oh, I didn't even think about that when that happened, that you would love that. Oh, that's yeah. like um that's like a play from that isekai you like. Yeah, be more specific. <laughs> with the date with the database. Oh, log horizon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Data all you have to say is database. I think I originally had it at like I, I had it at nine. I don't think it's a nine anymore. I do think it's losing a little bit of steam. However, got another preface. There's one episode left and I heard something happen. So if something big happens and I change my score, then my bad. But I'm still based off of 11 episodes right now. Animation is really well done. Uh, the OST, the score and like the fight scenes, I think are a huge standout for uh, this season. It's it's really really well done. I like how it it definitely elevates the fights for me. Uh, the story itself is whatever. Um, <laughs> I I do think that you know, I I've been comparing it to the boys this whole season. I think it's gonna be one of those things where like, of the elite seven people, like six of them are probably bad, and that one girl that they highlight is actually like really good and like wants to change and stuff. And I think her and Jin Wu are going to do something down the road but I think that's going to be for like the second season which I don't think is confirmed but I'm almost certain we're getting a second season I, I thought I saw somewhere that this is getting two cores at least I think it's a split uh, maybe that was just a rumor maybe I'm just talking out my ass but we will find out but I've been enjoying it uh, Miles your thoughts on solo leveling you thought so I, I, I guess I would the losing steam thing I would combat like a little bit because like episode 11 went like fucking hard in my yeah. opinion that did it's more like you know he got with the um, his name's Jin Ho and like he's like the billionaire trust fund baby. Yeah, the, yeah and so like they just like kind of just go like portal hopping to like level C dungeons or whatever and like they don't really like show it which I don't I understand they don't have to they literally just go in there kill the monster and then mine the materials and yeah. so like that stuff was kind of boring, but I liked it more when it was like huge epic snake fight, huge epic spider fight, huge epic insert whatever fight. Like I like that more than sort of what we've gotten like the last couple episodes. And then this might be a hot take though, but like the the night fight in the last episode, I really wasn't that invested in it to be Have honest. Have you ever played Dark Souls? Yeah, I've played it, but like I haven't played it. Okay, because like to me, that was just like such a Dark Souls fight, and it was like really epic in that that sort of way. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm in the minority on this one. Like, okay, because like, I mean, I don't like fights, and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> like that that was really. This is also good, super dumb, and I know it's called <laughs> solo level. Like, I feel like he's leveling too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Like I feel like, like it, the that that night fight is like season four fight. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, what, what even is the power scaling? He said that he feels like he's like B rank right now. Um, yep. in the most re recent episode, I don't think that the red haired guy is going to be evil. By the way, because he's like going to avenge his friends from the ant island or whatever because they had like that massacre yeah but cash rules rank. everything around them have you seen the I, boys i i have seen the boys I, I love the boys very little of the sinister levelness of what the seven do and the boys has happened in this yeah but like in the beginning of the boys like they're not all portrayed as a trey evil. murdered someone well, in the first H, 30 uh, that's seconds. Why i said everyone <laughs> Not everyone the is portrayed sexually as evil. assaults someone in the first five minutes, bro. You're making you're 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 saying things that are true and are <laughs> ruining my point. Okay, I'm saying <laughs> that you know how at the end of the boys, like everybody is in on it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know that yet in solo. Isn't like, there like? Isn't there like a like? A, yeah. It is okay. I guess, like you know, how at the beginning of episode one of the boys, you like learn via the lawsuit that Huey tries to do that they're all in on it, and then it's like well, there's like, like a corporate conspiracy. You didn't know like Black Noir was like in on it, in on it, and stuff like that. 
this is really bad, but I'm just only comparing it to the boys. <laughs> There's some context that's missing. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I, it, that's, I think that's fair. I think we'll learn some more about this organization. Like, I definitely don't think you're wrong there. I just don't think that they're, like, that evil. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like I th- I'm sure they're evil, right? Because they're a giant corporate entity, and those are generally pretty evil. But, like there's levels to it i guess like they're not boeing you know what i mean <laughs> like <laughs> um true you know i don't know uh i i sort of agree with you they had two arcs in a row that was like someone betrays him in a dungeon and i thought that was like a little repetitive like i think you want to like sort of split that up a teeny bit but i don't know i, I mean i just watched that night fight yesterday and i thought it was really tight so it the currently the show is doing no wrong for me because <laughs> he fought <laughs> he fought someone in armor and i thought it was neat that was neat. um just another so show I, did it a little bit better for me dungeon, who, dungeon what Meshi. Joe? Mm. he fights living armor in dungeon mesh yeah i know i saw that okay you thought that was better i love that episode i okay. i loved that episode uh, where i i like don't want to say that we're gonna have to fight each other in like 12 <laughs> weeks but Yo, we if you give it a to. seven, I'm punching you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, we're good. All right. Um, <laughs> who is that? What are your thoughts on solo level? It's fine. No, I, I, to be quite honest, I didn't actually think I was going to like this because my sisters read it and she said, I don't know if you're going to like this because I'm not a big, I like action, but when it's like repetitive like this and solo leveling and there's not enough characters and del- like character development with like, relationships i'm kind of like out of it it's fine will i watch season two probably but like it, it's been cool i think like the one thing i want to say is that what stood out to me was jinmu's voice actor because i think he was a standout for me this season only because like he did that voice change and i totally thought they changed voice actors when jinmu like evolved and to his like his upper level when he person. got hot when he got hot yeah he yeah. changed <laughs> and i and i was like oh is it a new voice actor but it's the same one same guy so i thought that was pretty cool um the other thing i love music so like i think hiroki sawano was probably the best person to do the soundtrack because he's known for doing a lot of like intense battle scene music like he's done attack on titan i think he's most known for that and he also did 86 aka 43 43 thank you Um, (laughs) but i think like ost was absolutely incredible i think hiroki like nailed it for sure the op is fine i i have a gripe about it but i i skipped it most of the time so yeah. 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 Uh, soul leveling does soul leveling things. And I think it's to the point. I don't know how much more we want to talk about this just because we're maybe a little bit long on time. I'm giving this an eight. Uh, I think it's solid. I will watch the second season if we get more content. Wow. Yeah. The show is also an eight for me. Uh, I think that I, I, okay. This is like, I don't think anyone is wrong when they talk about how the supporting cast is weak, but I do think that the supporting cast is like maybe a little stronger than like the general like meme would suggest like it's definitely not a strong one but i find all of the characters to be generally enjoyable though admittedly rather two to one dimensional right like they're not complex characters they don't move the plot along very much but like the the martial arts guy with one arm is like pretty neat Mm -hmm. you see him a few times he like meets up with some of the guys who abandoned him and like i thought that was pretty nice um his sister's sort of fun like she was definitely having some sort of like existential crisis when her brother became the hottest guy on earth. Uh, and I thought that was like a little bit of a fun bit, you know, so uh, uh, eight out of 10 for me. Yeah. I am also at an eight. I think like, even with the next episode airing, I think it's still going to stay at an eight for me. Right on three eights. Okay. So now we're getting into shows that we, whatever watched or dropped or whatever that we're not going to talk about. Oh, that take it away. I can finally give light to this show that I want everybody to watch. And it's Undead or Wanted Adventure. I loved it this season. It was a show that I didn't think I was going to put in my top personal five. Um, if you love fantasy, I highly recommend it. Um, the whole reason why I love it is because of the main character, Rent. I think he's such a green flag. He's such a good soul. In some ways, he reminds me of Himmel a bit. I wouldn't. I guess in some way, it is an underdog story because he dies and then he has to build back up to like an actual human human being um but i just love this show so much and obviously like like rose in healing magic there is lorraine i think we talked about lorraine a million times in the discord but 
She's wonderful. She's she's a researcher. She's smart. She's a lot like Mao Mao in ways because she just wants to like research rent and see why he's evolutionizing the way he is. Um, she's a lot of Mao Mao moments. So I really, 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 really like her. She also has some great assets. But besides that, <laughs> um, I, I really loved Undead Unwanted Adventure. I think if you liked Fryman, you might like it. Um, it's still like the, the plot's a bit all over the place a little. So I would give it an eight, but I... I highly recommend it. It had my favorite ED of the season. I really want to give highlight to that because it reminded me of Without Love um, Villain Ooh. Saga. It just like, that her song, but it also speaks to like where he is and where he wants to be. So I highly recommend if anyone wants to listen to it. It's a very beautiful song. So that's probably my top, top pick this season. Um, the one I want to rant on, which I think you all know what I'm going to rant on. Which the Beast. The witch, which in the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my manga right here. Look how beautiful it is. Was the anime just as beautiful? No. No. (laughs) (laughs) So as a, I will say, so I'm going to say this. The manga right now is an eight for me. So it's not even like a top 10. Like the story's fine. What I love about The Witch and the Beast is the characters and the art style. I will say like to the production company that did it, they tried their best. It's, It's a very hard manga to adapt. When you look at the art, I, I compared to like the way the dessert looks, it's very dark. So I, I was just so frustrated. And like, I think we made up a drinking game where like, how many faces does Ashraf have? Because he looked different in pretty much every single scene. There was just no consistency. Um, but I think like they did their best, like looking at their track record and taking what they were taking on, they did their best. So <laughs> I'm giving it a seven. Only because they did their best. Guido was Guido looked better than Asha for most of the season. I will say, like, the first three episodes are rough. And I think that's how it was when I read the manga. The first three parts of it were like, okay. But then as soon as Fenora got introduced, I think that's where the story gets picked up. Like, that's the part where I was like, oh, this is good. <laughs> So I will say, like, once the Fenora arc started in the manga, that's when, like, things picked up. I think it got a bit messy in the intro. And I know that episode three is where Pete dropped it. Um, yeah. Four, right? Four? Three was it four. Or whatever episode. Four, four is when the, the cop 360 yeah. no-scopes are kids. Yeah, so that's, oh, that, think... that's, that lives red free in my head. Okay. okay. I thought that well, scene was fine. Um, but yeah, I think it was fine. So I'm giving it a step because they tried their best. A for effort. <laughs> I will recommend the manga like a hundred percent. Will it get a second season? Probably. Will I still watch it? Probably. I know Miles watched it too. So I'm curious what Miles has to think about this one. Yeah. yeah, So I'm a little bit behind on it still, but I mean, I I don't like, uh, is it not good looking? No, it's not like that. That is a hundred percent correct. But I think the world is like super, super neat in it. It's like pretty grim and the way that like the magic systems works with like the lettering going around the arms and stuff, yeah. I thought think is like really cool. There's like a scene where they're talking in a restaurant and they're using magic to sort of give them soundproofing, which I think is very cool. You know, there's a lot of like practical uses of the magic that we see happen, which is something yeah. that I always, always like to see. Also, Fenora is mommy. So, <laughs> Um, you know, I like that. I don't know. It, it really does just sort of have that, I don't know, vibe or whatever to it. It's sort of like a a, a darker uh, Victorian steampunk. magic sort of, yeah, steampunky sort of vibe. And I, I just like really fuck with that. I'd probably give it like a seven as well, I'd assume. You know, I definitely didn't have any of the issues uh, Pete Pete had with it. Um <laughs> And so, you know, I, I, I'm not done with it yet, but it's definitely one that I'm, I'm planning on catching up on, you know, and so it's, it's not, not, not a drop for me. And I think I'm a little higher on it than the, the average person, but it is, I mean, it's just such a cool setting and vibe. So. Yeah. The keep it, the characters keep me going to be quite honest. So I'll probably still watch it. The next one, actually Miles watched this one too. Me and Miles have been watching the same shows. Dr. Elise. Yes. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I really liked her introduction. I think the first episode really, I think some people said it was a bit intense, but I personally really liked it because it showed like the type of person that she is and how dedicated of a doctor she is. And then she gets reincarnated. But like, I only enjoyed like the medical scenes and only with Dr. Graham. I did not care about the prince. I always forget his name because I think he's Arnold. I didn't care about the king. (laughs) 
okay, hey. don't disrespect Arnold. He's like Chud Arnold, right? Like he yeah. is goofy and silly, and he's like, I have diabetes, and I don't know what that is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I didn't care about like probably half of the show. I think like I just care about her. I just want her to do like medicine things, kind of like Mau Mau. We just want her to do medical shit and have fun. So it's fine. I I do like it. It's it's sitting at like a seven, maybe seven point five, depending on like where it's gonna go. Cause there's still like one more episode left. But I think it's fine for like I think it's a shoujo. I actually don't know, but I still enjoyed it. I liked Elise as a character. I just I really don't care about everyone else in her life. So except Dr. Graham. Um and then, quick one, just, it's time for torture, torture Princess. Like, I know a lot of people did not watch the show, and I didn't think I was going to continue it, but I just want to say that, yes, the joke got old. The concept, like, it, it was, like, the same pretty much every episode, but there was heart in the characters, and I think, like, there was some magic with it. I, I'm someone that loves character relationships, and I think seeing them bond with the, with the princess and the demons and the whole, like, torture shtick, even though, like, it was repetitive, it was different every episode. So I gave it a seven. I think it's fine, but it's not, it's not a must watch. And I feel like most people probably wouldn't watch it, but I stuck with it surprisingly. So I gave it a seven. And Will what you I watch didn't. Season two? Yes. I think it's like, I think it's because it was on a Monday okay. that like nothing, nothing else was airing. If it was on a Saturday, I'd probably still watch it on the Monday. I think it was fine. It was like a nice show to watch when I was eating dinner. So like I wasn't as invested, but um, I think it was so fun. And I think like it had the second best Mau Mau of the season. There was a Mau Mau. <laughs> She's a cute little demon daughter and she was adorable and she tried her best to torture the princess. And I think that was really adorable. So, yeah, I'll just quickly run through what I dropped. I think like the shows that I dropped, the ones that I'll probably give a second chance is Cherry Magic. I just dropped a Kel's board, but like I'm willing to give it a second chance only because a lot of my friends on Twitter love it. So I might give it a second chance and just binge it. And then also Mr. Villain's Day Off. It did, the shtick did get a bit old, so I did drop it, but I might give it a second chance. What I won't give a second chance to is Sasuke and Peeps, because all I liked was Peeps. All I liked was Peeps and the Isekai parts, but then as soon as they meld the two different worlds, I was like, okay, I'm done. And then Demon Prince of Emoji House, I just got bored, to be quite honest. I have nothing to say about that one. Uh, Hokkaido Girls, I dropped it because it just wasn't for me. I know a lot of people love it. I just, the suggestiveness and stuff, I just couldn't <laughs> watch any more episodes. And then, I mean, I only watched one episode, but Delusional Monthly Magazine. I think everyone should just watch the first episode because it feels like a fever dream. And um, shout out to Jay for actually watching it through because yeah. I think he's the, only <laughs> he's the only person that's watching it. So shout out to Jay. But that's it. I think that's all I dropped. So, All right, yeah. right on. Uh, I'm going to run through some of the shows that I watched and dropped. Uh, there's two light beer animes, I call it. They're essentially the light beer of a specific type of show. Uh, the first one is uh, Tomozaki-kun, bomb tier character Tomozaki-kun, which is essentially Origairu light. Uh, really liked this season. There's like a bullying arc that was kind of like three episodes that I didn't enjoy. Everything else was like really solid. Like I... I was a big fan of sort of this love triangle and sort of coming to a conclusion on a love triangle too. Uh, big fan of that. I'm giving that an eight. And then you mentioned it, Hokkaido Gals, which is to me dress up darling light. The there is like early suggestiveness, and then it kind of goes away. People didn't like it because the the manga is it's very horny. <laughs> very oh. suggestive, and then compared to the anime, it's like night and day yeah they're really after like episode like four there was like almost like none other than you know they have huge breasts or whatever but like it was not like it, it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be i gave it a yeah. seven it was fine two shows are absolutely trash uh chain soldier and uh tales of wedding rings which are both getting second seasons they are both very bad shows the only thing I good I could say about this is uh, Chain Soldier. The cast is really fun. Um, outside of that, the animation looked like it was made on MS Paint. And Tales of Weathering is just like super boring, hard carried by one character. I gave both of those fours. Uh, shows I dropped, Metallic Rouge, 
yeah, the the first the first episode felt like I was watching three episodes in one. I was so confused. Turns out I was right. The show got like obliterated in ratings. Um, Sasaki and Peeps. They forgot Peeps was the character, and Peeps was the best character. Drop that. Uh, Mr. Villain's Day Off. I don't think this show is bad, but when I'm watching like 25 seasonals, if it doesn't like even hook me a little bit, I drop it pretty quick and I drop this. And then uh, Way of Pawn, which was a Mahjong anime, but also at the same time had a character like Peeps. It was like a, uh, his name is Chonbo. He's just like a flying magical thing that teaches the main girl how to play Mahjong. It was whatever. It was, this was another show. I don't think it's bad. It's, it's middle of the road average, but there's one show I have to talk about. I watched 18 episodes of this show and I was trying, I, I liked where it was started and I hated where it ended. And that is Shangri-La frontier. And my <laughs> biggest thing with these style of games, it's the same thing in SAO. If you have something in the game, that is like so broken and like not fun in any way. Nobody is going to play this game. The fact that in SAL that Kirito is the only person that can dual wield is such a dumb game mechanic. It literally pulls me away from it. And as someone who's play, I play MMOs all the time. Like I still play MMOs all the time. If I see like a, uh, a mechanic in the game that like, makes one type of person better than everybody else. I hate it. And this is what they did in Shangri-La Frontier, and it's the whale. If there's a game that is pay to win, I am there's no way I am playing it. So in Shangri-La Frontier, when they're fighting the giant samurai, how do they defeat it? They buy every item humanly possible that to throw at everything at him in order to defeat this one boss, which I also think is really stupid because if you spend all of your money on all these items on defeating this one boss, you can never defeat them again. It defeats the purpose of like repeat repeatable content. And I just, I hated it. I hated it so much. I'm like, why would you spend, imagine playing an MMO for like a thousand hours and everything you put into it was to defeat one boss that you will never do it again and everything that you work towards is now gone just so you can have like the flexing rights to say that you defeated this one dude i hated it it drove me crazy oh my god it was so bad and also just like the game mechanics were just like dumb like essentially miles you'll get this imagine if you were playing wow and your druid in your class could just be res 30 times like the same person 30 times. All they kept doing was throwing revive potions, revive potion, revive potion. I think they revived Sun Raku like 12 times in the fight. I'm like, that's really poor game mechanics. This is not a fun game. This is really dumb. And to, when I see that, I'm like, this isn't a game people would play. This is, this is terrible. I, I dropped it. And it's like, it's, I compare everything to Log Horizon. So it's like, Log Horizon does it perfectly. It is a perfect. MMO RPG raid boss battle. And Shangri La, they're not even max level and they're fighting one of the seven hardest bosses in the game. That game mechanic is so stupid. Oh my God, it drove me crazy. Dropped it. Trash. Absolutely trash. However, shout out to, I do think Sun Raku is a fun character. I also want to say shout out to Emil. Emil hard carried the cast. I also dropped Witch and the Beast uh, episode three or four or whatever it is with the kids. <laughs> Lives run free in my head. I. I, I don't know how many shows were of one episode. I dropped the show so fast and I still bring it up. It was that bad to me. So that's that. I'm gonna pass it to Miles. Miles, any other shows that you watch or drop that you want to talk about? Yeah, so we've mentioned everything that I've I'm still watching and or dropping. You know, I I'm probably gonna drop Shangri-La too. To me, it was just like the emphasis on like how good of a game it was. And like it's such a it's such a tough thing that's a because huge I thing. I genuinely think if you make something be an actual good game, it's not necessarily going to be fun to watch from like a viewer standpoint. Yep. You know, like, so I get that, but then like, I don't know. I might, I can't, I just can't help myself. You know what I mean? Like I just, it annoys me if it's not, if it's like clearly bad game design and you know, that happens like they, they do try some stuff, but like also like data mining exists. Everyone would have known that that rabbit town was real. True. That would have happened. Yeah. Like, 
And then also, like, why wouldn't he tell everyone about it? He should literally tell everyone about it so they can figure out about it and, like, min-max it, right? Like, yes. if you're actually a min-maxer and you discover something, you tell everyone. Everyone, like, yes. You see it on Season of Discovery currently, right? Like, in WoW, like, if, it's like currently there are getting Discord getting yeah. <laughs> figuring this, like, everything they can figure out. Like, have we tried this? And it's all systematic. No joke. I literally have an Excel on my other monitor for uh, Phase 3 uh, leveling. Like, there you go. It's min-max yeah. to the point of all, yeah. And so, like, on one hand, I, I think I completely understand that that's, like, not going to be an, a fun show to watch, right? Like, and so I get why they make the mechanics they do, but I just sort of wish that they would drop the pretense or something. I don't know what I wish, but I wish it was a little bit different. I, can I, can I, for, like, because I'm, like, a hardcore, like, MMO guy. It's yeah. To me, it's like if you grew up playing football your whole life and then you were watching a football anime and then the quarterback is throwing it with two hands and you're like that's not how you throw a football that's how i view shangri-la i'm like that's not how any of this works and so but but like if you never played football as long as the spiral football looks cool and flashy it doesn't matter but like yeah to me it's just like these game mechanics are so fucking bad yeah i i i I completely get that i you know, I don't know. It's fine. Um, so I'm watching Dr. Elise. I, I enjoy it. So I read a review that described it as uh, like a female power fantasy. And like, I think that that's like probably true. And I think we should all think about how the fact that that is just a woman who wants to help people medically and like <laughs> just be a good person. Like that's like, we should also sort of reflect on that. Um, there, are, there, there's like similar issues with it to Shangri-La, but I, I don't care. Cause I don't, it doesn't seem to take itself as seriously, that, but like, she couldn't just do these surgeries that she's doing because the medical technology isn't there. Like, I wish they would dive into that a little bit more because, like, I'm a nerd, but, like, also <laughs> it doesn't really take away from it that <laughs> that it doesn't, you know, like, I, there isn't a lot of, like, okay, like, in 2024 Korea, we have a robot that will snip these veins and stuff, but in wherever the hell we are now, like, they that they don't even know how to do this and so like are they going to have the bands i need to like tie things off if the surgery was possible we're going to procure them so I, I think there's like some failed depth there but ultimately she's fun and like at least one of the guys is hot so you know that's good it, it does have arnold light just like worse arnold uh, i also wish we would see evil elise more like i wish she was sort of like phase in and out of her old personality and that's definitely not a me thing that's what everyone wants it's not that i love evil people yeah uh i'm watching which the beast still i dropped so wait this was did we just not talk about fluffy paradise at all oh yeah i i forgot that i finished fluffy paradise <laughs> okay. the end was, anyways the end was uh, weird but it, it, I, anyways, liked it. I, I dropped the shit out of fluffy paradise. i'm gonna drop the shit out of you bro <laughs> i gave <laughs> I it a seven right. by the way that sounds right. I mean, it sounds a little high, but for you, it sounds right. Yeah, enough fluff for me to give it a seven. You know, the political. What happened? Drop. What happens at the end? I need to know. Well, what like, makes it weird? so like, and like episode nine, she like I knew it was going to get political. So they essentially like overthrow a a corrupt mayor, and like that's okay. the extent I thought it was going to go because it wasn't serious. the The mayor was really very um villainy like very of course okay, I'm the yeah, villain. Like, it might be like the grinch or something where like you can make yeah, it he's a- like tying people to train tracks, yeah and then right? the, like- <laughs> and then the last episode was like a race war and like they just hate yeah. they hated cobalts and they hated dog people and they're going to massacre them and nefertima had to like come up with this plan and like half of them still died it was just like it was it was it was a little extra where like I okay. get the politicalness, but do we need to bring in the race war? Did and they, they build did. up the race war at all until the end, a or did it come out of bit, nowhere? But I think okay. it, I I wouldn't say they did a good job, but I do think that okay. they presented it. But uh, yeah, it got weird. But there was a lot of fluff. <laughs> so it was fun. Okay. <laughs> Fine. I I don't know. I think Weakest Tamer was more of my Fluffy Paradise than Fluffy Paradise. So, yeah. Fluffy Paradise ED ED of the of the season. Oh yeah, for sure, hundred <laughs> percent. That was the cutest thing ever. I literally <laughs> uploaded it to YouTube because it wasn't on YouTube. <laughs> so if you look up Fluffy Paradise ED, if you see a show or if you see a channel called Pete Anime Reacts, that's my channel. <laughs> 
<laughs> because nobody had the fluffy paradise ed up and so i was like i'm gonna record it and put it up there don't sue me don't sue me for copyright i, I promise i'm sorry i'll take it down do you find it miles yeah i'm looking at it right now yep, do that- you have five subscribers i know and i have like three thousand views or something i wish this was our podcast <laughs> uh miles did you have any final thoughts before we jump to our last show nope those were the things that i've touched cool uh people mentioned before uh good arnold uh it's seventh time loop a uh, for new characters for this season uh Riche stole the show for me i loved Riche. i i liked how they portrayed almost all of her past lives in this current one the only one that i thought that felt a little weird was like they showcased like her assassin a little bit by yeah. like showing somebody like in a group of crowd and like pinpointing them but then they didn't really do a whole lot with that they more showcased like her knighthood and then towards the end with like her old professor they did some stuff with like the trade guy in the middle so i did like how they were sort of looping it back and forth Uh, obviously it's called seventh time loop but like intertwining those previous lives into her current one and like how as being like the future queen or whatever, how that plays it into that specific role. And Risha was just like so much fun. Like the first episode where she's just like, all right, I'm a dip for this party. Peace takes off her heels and just like jumps out a window. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is the one. Yeah. She's super fun. And then I don't know how you describe the Arnold relationship with her, but I did kind of like this. They obviously both are into each other, but like Risha doesn't, want to admit it because like he literally killed her in a past life so like i understand the trauma maybe a little bit there like he's hot so like get over it girl but then like you know like he's like really respectful at times where it's like like he won't touch her if he does touch her like she's allowed to do like she gets something of whatever she wants arnold will like grant it for her so i kind of like this where like arnold sort of like it's like picking and choosing when to maybe like push the boundaries a little bit and Rishay getting a little flustered because I think she kind of wants him to at some point. So that was fun, especially the last scene with the ring where like she always longed for essentially getting proposed to, but like she doesn't realize it and she got really flustered. That was super cute. Uh, This was a really fun show to watch. Also shout the mangaka or the author for this is so active on Twitter. Like if you message her or uh, tweet at her, she responds to everything. She is so active on Twitter, just like talking to fans and stuff like that. And I, I don't know if I've ever seen a mangaka be like that active on social media and interacting with people who are watching the show. So shout out to the, the, the author. That's just, that's just super cool. Uh, Miles, what are your thoughts on seven time? Yeah, so I, I very much enjoyed Seven Time Loop. Um, I think that it has a little bit of failed potential uh, that I sort of decided that sort of like on the more recent episodes. So when they have like the Black Powder arc with her sort of like alchemist mm-hmm. life, right? I sort of wish we had like heard about these things like a little bit earlier because she was like concerned about this, but only really like when he showed up. But like if... It, if the invention of gunpowder was like actually going to play a big role in the war, surely she would have been like aware of that beforehand having like done that. So like, I wish there was like more seeds of like plot lines to come because she's aware of some of these like very prominent people in society. Um, That being said, overall, I think it's a very enjoyable show. Riche and Arnold have a very fun dynamic. Um, Riche is like just a great character. Um, She's very smart and able to interact with people, but they don't like make she's not like even overpowered, though. Like she's really good at a whole lot of things, but there are people that are like better at those individual things. But it's her like eclectic view that she has due to her experiences that allow her to like solve these problems or, you know, present a solution that these other characters don't necessarily uh, come to or whatever right she's just like a very well-rounded individual i guess as one would be after they've lived several lives but it really does seem like she's she's made the most of them right and has done important things so it's always fun to see the flashbacks and how they they pull together and how they relate to like a certain scenario and as we get further along more of her past lives get like brought into like an individual uh scenario which i think is good right like it's like 
she's pulling from more than one place as opposed to like I used to be a maid so I know how to make yep. beds or whatever like you know it's like oh well, I, I know this from when I was an alchemist but I know this from when I was a merchant and now I can use this because I know this guy personally but he doesn't know that I know him and it's just very good the way that all of that sort of comes together like you know, I was saying that I wish these things were foreshadowed a little bit more, and I definitely do, but I think that the way that they're resolved is more or less perfect. You know, so uh, I very much enjoyed this. I hope I hope we get more. Um, I was hoping for, like, a little more... I feel like we don't have, like, an overarching plot yet. Like, she's trying to stop the war, but, like, I don't necessarily know if we've, like, come any closer to, like, understanding the catalyst for that. Um, other than like maybe Arnold is just kind of evil because he has hinted towards that like and like maybe they're just telling us the truth there I don't know because what do you think um I loved so I pronounced her name as Rish so I'm just gonna say Rish but I just loved her introduction I think just like jumping off that balcony was like I watched that and I was like okay I really like you um <laughs> but as a I mean I love strong female characters and I loved her fierce tenacity and like her willingness to learn and like she she obviously like learned a lot of skills and she used that for her next life um her seventh life excuse me but um i really liked your personality hot take i don't really care about her and arnold like i just i just the romance was like oh yeah butterflies but i just i just didn't hit the same as the other romances that i've read but it's fine it's fine i think like the story could use some work but i still really enjoy it it it's it's fine. I think she she's a good character, and I like her the most. And I, I think Pete, Pete also brought up a good point about the author. I think the author I've seen on Twitter like every day, almost all the time. She's always so active, and she's always promoting her work. And um, it makes me want to look at her work and, and read it because I think it would be really interesting interesting to read. I don't think it was confirmed for another season yet, but no. But it's it has over a million copies sold, which is a good sign. So never say never i would say but if i if i was a betting man and i am i would say probably not yeah i if it did happen i still would watch it i think like the overarching arc is just making arnold a good guy you know like yeah when she made him collab not collaborate but like make peace with the other city so that's her little ways of doing that and then i thought it was really cute how like she wanted to get proposed to because i feel like she's lived so many lives but like her first life, she was dumped. And so she's lived many lives without like a relationship. So mm -hmm. I think like, now that she's like yearning for it, it's finally happening. I thought that was really cute. So yeah. could not agree more. This was just a lovely watch coming into it. It wasn't even on my radar. Uh, shout out to Miles for putting it on my radar. So uh, I I'm sure I would have watched it anyway because everybody else was watching it. But got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, I'm giving this show an eight. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I had a lot of fun. I do think that if I did like how they showcased her previous lives in this current life, but I do wish they did a little bit more with it. So like an example was, would be like, you know, using her assassin skills, somehow w mixing it with her maid skills. I don't know how you could do that, but I think it'd be fun if you could somehow intertwine some of these or like, you know, if she's a knight and an alchemist, you can use like, an acid potion while she's fighting or something i think that'd be really fun uh mixing those together but i think this was really good and if we get another season i'll definitely watch it yeah i mean i agree i also have this set an eight out of ten I, I would want to watch more you know and I, I think that there's a lot of interesting characters i think that sometimes things get tied together a little too comfortably um like like she was like totally kidnapped and then like was like don't worry i, I get it like you know you just want to impress your brother that's why you kidnapped me <laughs> oh, um you <laughs> and it's like you know i don't know you can like react to that like a little bit more but overall i think it's like a really it's a really good show and like seeing more of her life like you know i don't think the assassin thing is like had a chance to come into play but like surely that job exists for a reason and so seeing what will happen will be interesting and if she has to get like her hands a little bit more dirty at some point you know because she's been very arbiter of pc currently and you know like you know I, I don't expect it to like become very dark or anything but like maybe like a little bit you could see that because i guess if she was killing people like that's like what i'm curious about right like in that life where she was in a session was she killing people like because that would be interesting and you don't see people do that like even with like your 
like they sort of shy away from that sometimes in spy family right like the fact that your job is murdering people which i get right because you mm-hmm. want her to be like likable uh, <laughs> people don't like people who murder people you know but i, I don't know yeah so anyways uh, i'm with you eight out of ten i would definitely watch more if we got it because that uh yeah i'm at an eight i think i i if, i had it at a nine but i think as like midway through i i bumped it down a little bit to an eight it's fine. I, I still really enjoy it. I recommend to anybody who loves like female led anime. I think it's one of it's a one of, it's a good one to watch. Right on. Three eighths. And wow, we have made it. We did it. Way to go, everybody. Woo! That concludes our winter review. Um thank you, Miles. Thank you, Cosette, for joining me. And thank you, the listener slash watcher. If you want to support us, the best way to do so. Like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you're watching or listening to us on. Next week, we have Watch Club for Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. Outside of that, I think we're doing Mal Review Game 6 before I leave for Japan, just because we need to get some content in while I'm out there. So I uh, want to say thank you. Let us know in like, the comments or our Discord uh, what your favorite show of the winter was. Maybe a show you're looking forward to in spring. Anything like that. We love talking seasonal anime. So thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Peace! Bye-bye!